I would like now to invite um, Kaylee Geschke to come and uh, give the invocation. Katie? Heavenly Father, you have gathered us here today to celebrate not only our accomplishments, but also yours. It is because of you that we were able to find the strength to complete our time here at Ancilla College and are now ready to move on. I ask that you guide us, the class of 2017, as we prepare to face new struggles. Isaiah 4031 states, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. I pray that your grace follows us and you continue to lend us your strength in all our future endeavors. Amen. Amen. Everyone may be seated at this time. As uh, president of Ancilla, my role today is really quite simple. It's to welcome, it's to recognize, it's to congratulate, it's to challenge, and finally, at some point, to confer your hard-earned degrees and do all, this, all of this in a timely fashion. My wife always reminds me that nobody ever complains if someone speaks too short. And so I will, I will try to stick to that today. It's an honor for me to welcome all of you, graduates, trustees, faculty, staff, alumni, family and friends, and especially you parents and significant others to Ancilla's 2017 commencement exercises. Congratulations to all of you as you rightfully celebrate this most memorable day in your lives. You are about to receive your degrees, which represent many years of diligent work and study, degrees you have dreamed of, worked for, and definitely earned. The diploma that you are about to receive signifies to the world that you have met or surpassed all of the appropriate collegiate standards. We would not be here celebrating this day had it not been for several people who played very critical roles in your lives along the way. Take a minute to show our appreciation for, number one, your parents, grandparents, brothers, sisters, aunts, uncles, children, and significant others who have been with you every step of the way. Second group were the trustees that are here today. Uh, these are the individuals who work diligently and quietly behind the scenes on behalf of the college and all of her students. And finally, Ancilla's dedicated faculty and staff who have encouraged, taught, mentored, and believed in you. These individuals have worked hard to prepare each of you for this day, and more importantly, for a meaningful and productive future. I'd like you to show your appreciation for these three groups of people, parents and so forth. If you would just stand, faculty, staff, trustees, if you would stand so the graduates can recognize each of you. Parents and so forth, please stand. Sometimes when we're students, we, we forget who it is that helped us get to this point in, in our careers. And I hope that you don't forget and hope you never forget that. I sincerely hope that all of you understand and appreciate how truly outstanding all of these individuals are and how much, by believing in you, they have contributed to your being here today. And I've asked our faculty and everyone to stand to all of you graduates and to all of these individuals who have done so many things for you in this college. I say thanks and congratulations. At this time, I would like to invite here um, to give the student government address, Macy Blosser. Macy?
Good afternoon, President Zirkel, four handmaids, honored trustees, distinguished guests, and of course, our class of 2017. I thank you for the privilege and honor of being able to speak here today. In the time I have here, I won't claim to know how to face the many opportunities and challenges of postgraduate life that we're going to face. Instead, I want to spend these moments together reflecting on the distinctive kind of education that has shaped each of us for our futures. Like many of you, I came to Ancilla College because I desired a college that was committed to student success. From the time I stepped through the doors here, I realized that this was the kind of college that invested in each of us as individuals. The warm welcome from the admissions office to registering with Inga, I felt an immediate sense of belonging. Our instructors embraced each of us as individuals and provided us with new paths for us to follow. <coughs> Smaller class sizes allowed us the individual attention we desired to achieve, achieve our academic goals. Our instructors not only taught us a curriculum, they taught us the confidence, leadership, and to believe in ourselves. Many, time our work, many times our workload was challenging, but as the old proverb states, rough waters are a truer test of leadership. In calm water, everyone has a good captain. While the education was great, it was the memories that we made along the way that will last us a lifetime. Whether it was cheering on the men's soccer team as we streamed the national championship game live, or the excitement of the basketball and volleyball games, our social experiences here have been memorable. Finally, I have this bit, this bit of advice. Read Dr. Seuss. He is one of the world's greatest philosophers, and what could be better than this? You have brains in your head, you have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself any direction you choose. Whatever direction you decide to take, don't forget the steps you took here at Ancilla College. Congratulations, class of 2017. We made it. Thank you, Macy. It's now my, my pleasure and honor to introduce our speaker for this year's commencement, uh, Mr. Randy Danielson. Um, and it's truly an honor. And Randy was supposed to do this last year. So he's going to be even better because he had a whole year to practice what he was going to say. Randy's a Plymouth native. Uh, he has a long, and you can read about it in your program, read all about him in your program. He has a long history with Ancilla and the poor handmaids of Jesus Christ. He's an alumnus of, of Ancilla College. He has a career in mortuary science, has been serving this community for more than 40 years in a dedicated, loyal way. Randy, his wife Eleanor, children Olivia, Renee, and Mark purchased a Johnson Danielson funeral home over 20 years ago. He's deeply involved in Plymouth and in, in trying to see Plymouth become a really a vital city, a vital region, and plays a key role in that. He's been an Ancilla trustee for the past 11 years. Randy has, has been and is a true leader. He gets things done. He's a true friend of this institution, of this community. Please help me to welcome one of our very own, Mr. Randy Danielson. Randy? Thank you, Ken, and thank you, Diane, for the seating arrangement, because I told my wife before I left the house, I hope I didn't trip going up the steps to the podium. I think I handled the two steps just fine. Good morning to you all. I can't imagine how you felt when you learned that an undertaker would be addressing you at your commencement. <laughs> and you still came. Um, it's good that you came because no one here but maybe one that just told me at the door he came for my speech alone. No one came here for me. We all came here for every one of you. One of the things that is good for all of us to know is that I believe in short homilies, so we will try to keep to the program. For over 40 years, I have had a passion for funeral service, and not in some weird sort of way, but one that profoundly touches the lives of those who are living through the effects of death, because it truly takes a village to bury your dead. My story began to you light years away 
in the fall of 1973. And, and so I know many of you are thinking, okay, I thought we were done with just another old guy telling us what we probably already know, so bear with me. Well, it was then that I met a band of women right here in Donaldson, Indiana, who had a passion for loving God and helping others, the community of the poor handmaids of Jesus Christ. I had just taken a job at a local funeral home in Plymouth with a desire to one day become a funeral director. We were called upon to bury the dead of this community. I witnessed firsthand the love and respect that they had for each other and how that continued even in death. Probably the most profound thing a liberal politician ever said was shared by William Gladstone as he stated, show me the manner in which a nation or a community cares for its dead and I will measure exactly the sympathies of its people their respect for the laws of the land, and the loyalty to high ideals. This community, this chapel, and Ancilla College has had an impact on my life like none other. Yes, I am proud to say that I am an alum of Ancilla College, but never did I achieve the honor that's being bestowed on you today as a graduate of Ancilla College. And for that, I admire all of you greatly. What I do know, like all of you, at some point we made a decision to take responsibility for our own life and commit to a path in that life. I truly believe in divine intervention that led me to Ancilla College, and for that, I thank God every day. It was here that I was inspired to become a good student and also a good person. This very place took me from having a desire to having a passion for what I do today. I encourage you to recognize what some may say are naturally born talents and give thanks for they truly are God-given gifts. Whatever your gifts are, use them to the best of your ability, but never forget to mentor along the way, celebrate those successes in life, but never lose sight of giving back. So if you are to be a leader, then lead. If you are to be a servant, then serve. God wants us to be happy and rewarded in this short time on earth. This week, our funeral home was called upon to serve a beautiful person and a forever friend of Ancilla, Betty Powell Beacon. Her mantra in life was simple. If it is worth doing, it is worth doing right. This has never been, this has been the very commitment of the ministry of the poor handmaids of Jesus Christ in continuing to provide higher edu education for students from truly across the globe. Last year, we had the privilege of caring for one of Plymouth's most successful businessmen. His name was Everett Colvin. He always said, if you work only for the money, you will never make it. But if you love your work, you will attain success. I believe in these, and I have experienced just that. Your story begins today, and I can tell you that 44 years passes quickly. You have the ability to make a difference in your lives and in the lives of others. I challenge you to take what might be your desire and find your passion in life. And with that, you will find success, peace, and contentment. My very best to all the 2017 graduates. Thank you.
I would certainly recommend that uh, when you get out of here and have a notepad handy, you jot down some of the things you remember from what Mr. Danielson just said. It's really the key to your future, and uh, take that very seriously. I now call upon Sam Solomon, the Acting Vice President for Academic Affairs, to present the candidates for degrees. Sam. Candidates, what an exciting day. This is the culmination of untold sacrifices, many joys, probably more frustrations. All of it hopefully has stretched your intellect and deepened your soul. Who you were when you started here is not who you are today. Oftentimes, this is a bittersweet moment for faculty, staff, coaches, and administrators because, believe it or not, we've actually come to like you. <laughs> we, we appreciate you. We've come to know your unique idiosyncrasies, and so it's sad for us to see you leave. However, the joy of you moving on far exceeds that. And we're so excited for what lies ahead for you. The employees of Ancilla, and I'm sure your family and friends would concur in my prayer that echoes the words of our Lord in the Gospel of John. When Jesus was preparing his disciples for what would lie ahead without him, he gives an unimaginable promise. He tells them, for you in the future, greater things are yet to come. Lord, I ask that that would be the case for these graduates. Let them achieve greater things in their future. Hold on to Christ's promise. Heed the words of one of the most influential people in all of Christendom and Western civilization, St. Paul, who in reflecting in his life of regrets and mistakes, as well as great accomplishments, never found satisfaction with his present condition. He said, I focus not on the past, what lies behind, but each day look ahead, look forward, and I continually strive to attain a greater prize. Let these degrees this day be a time of celebration for what you've achieved. But let them not be the finish line. Let this be a new starting point as you pass through this rite of passage. Move forward, achieve what Ancilla faculty, staff, coaches, and administrators have worked to instill in you. Lead, lead value-centered lives lead by continually embarking on lifelong learning. We at Ancilla love to hear what happens with our graduates after they leave. And hopefully one day, some of you will be speaking at commencement. So, it's my prayer that you accomplish greater things and that you strive forward each day. And so it's at this time that I'll ask the candidates to please rise. President Zirkel, it's my honor to present these candidates for Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, and Associate of Science in Nursing degrees. These students have completed, or will have completed by August 2017, the prescribed course of study. They have passed, or will have passed, the required examinations. And finally, they are presented to you for the conferring of the Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, and Associate of Science in Nursing degrees. In accordance with the charter of the college, granted by the state of Indiana, and by the authority vested in me by the faculty of Ancilla College and the Board of Trustees, 
I confer upon you the degree of Associate of Arts, Associate of Science, or Associate of Science in Nursing, as may be appropriate to each of you, and declare that you are entitled to all the rights, privileges, and amenities pertaining thereunto. You may now turn your tassels. You may be seated. Will candidates please proceed to the platform to receive diplomas? Will the first row please rise and move into the wings? Please return to your pew and be seated. Audience, I ask that you please hold your applause until all candidates are recognized so each person receives the honor they deserve. I will now call forward the candidates for the Associate of Arts degree. Rachel Felton. John Fusen. Kaylee Geschke. Caleb Graff. Hagen Hyatt. Sister Lynn Lee. Nathaniel Joseph Spangle. Dante Young Young. Sister Beek Vu. Jessica Nicole Bachman. Christopher Lee Banks. Megan Michelle Benoit. Now I will call forward candidates for the Associate of Science degree. Macy Blosser. Detriana Rennell Bonds. Samantha Joe Brenneman. Jillian Brown. Victoria Michelle Bush. Bryce Alexander Bustamante. Bryant Clevenger. Manuel Castellon. Jade Doyle. Kristen Duff. Bailey Fierno. Joshua Jordan Forth.
Alyssa Frain. Leslie France. Leah Gibson. Jordan Gerard. Catherine M. Gore. Alexandra Grant. Jelaine K. Griswold. Kayla Elizabeth Grossman. Mustafa Guy. Kara K. Hackworth. Calvin Hoppel. Haley Hempel. Megan L. James. Andrew Jones. Leah Kaiser. Michael Ann Cuss. Rachel Nicole Larson. Dakota Lobziger, Alexandria Maloney, Anderson McCoy, Patty Mack, Kevin. Mendoza, Alexis Miller, Eric Emmanuel Patino, Brandon Pettit. Dylan Fair, Romario Antonio Pigot, Lauren Pearl, P. 
Patrick Reese. Daniel Reynoso Barrios. Austin Salazar. Nathaniel Ryan Schof. Zachary Schultz. Miranda Schuyler Shepherd. Evan Justin Daniel Smith. Austin Nicholas Traxler. Janelle Leanne Vandeputty. Pamela Weiss. Natalie N. Walters. Kelsey West. Helder Semedo. Juan Jose Zambrano. Kaylee Marie Zimmerman. Karen Yvette Zuniga Marquez. Now I'm going to call forward the candidates for the associate of Science and Nursing, Nellie Alexander. Courtney Ann Bedard. Amanda Elizabeth Cook. Rachel Isom. Felicia Goodsell. Elizabeth Karras. Monica Henry Williams. Tiffany Nicole Turner. Deanna R. Wicker. Amanda Esparza.
At this point, I'd like to have all the graduates officially now stand, turn, and face the audience so we can recognize you. Okay, thank you. Take your seats again. Now I would like to have Josh Felty come up. Josh graduated last year, and he will bring you greetings from the Alumni Association. Josh? Good morning, or afternoon, whatever it is at this point. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zirkel. Thank you, poor handmaids. Thank you, faculty and staff. Um, I can't tell you what a huge honor it is to be here speaking today in front of all of you. As I was writing my speech this week, um, I kept thinking about how I felt in your shoes last year. Um, however, I will confess, as I was remembering how I felt and thinking about how you all must feel, uh, excited, relieved that finals are over, um, a bit nervous about the future, I discovered I was quite jealous, actually. It's not fair. None of this is fair. Um, here I am speaking at a graduation, and I have a week and a half of my own school left to finish. <laughs> but no, I'm just joking. I recall feeling excited and elated, and I'm sure that is how all of you feel right now. I want to talk briefly about a few things today. First, I'd like to share a little bit about my experience at Ancilla and what that all meant to me. Second, I want to touch briefly on what life has been like after Ancilla and hopefully ease whatever nerves you may have about moving forward. I began classes at Ancilla as a high school senior, wanting to earn dual credits just to get ahead. I did not intend to stay at Ancilla after finishing high school and fully expected to move on uh, without giving it a second thought. However, obviously that's not what happened. You don't have to spend a lot of time on campus to begin to pick up on something special, something different, something I did not expect when I first came here. By the end of my first semester, I finally figured out what felt differently. The people here, both the staff, the professors, or the staff, the professors, the poor handmaids, actually cared about my time here and how I was doing. I experienced firsthand many times the overwhelming support group that works here at Ancilla, as I'm sure many of you did. Whenever I needed extra help from professors, most of that was regarding math, if I'm going to be completely honest, or just general advice on making choices about my future, someone was always there to help. One specific example of this special culture at Ancilla is regarding an opportunity I had to fulfill a lifelong dream of mine. During my final semester at Ancilla, I was encouraged to apply for a congressional internship with the Office of Congresswoman Jackie Walorski. Working on Capitol Hill had been a dream of mine since middle school, so I was really focused on trying to get this internship. Uh, one random day, I ended up walking into Dr. Zirkel's office and asking him if he'd write a letter of recommendation for me. He readily agreed. He wrote the letter personally, and I got the internship. One would be hard pressed to find another school where one could walk into the college president's office without an appointment, no less, and ask for a personal favor like that. After getting this internship, I had a problem, though. Like most internships in the federal government, this one was not paid. As I was told, we're paid in experience. As far as I know, you can't eat experience nor can you pay rent with experience. So I had an issue. DC housing is incredibly expensive and I knew I could not afford to handle that on my own. I happened to mention this problem offhand to a couple people here at Ancilla and of course somebody came through. I ended up living with the family of a staffer that works here at Washington during the time that I was out there. 
Um, once again, I would challenge you to find another school like this, where a staffer would go above and beyond what they're paid to do. Not only did I intern in the House of Representatives in Washington, but this led to a paid position on the Todd Young Senate campaign, which has led me to another internship on Capitol Hill in the office of Senator Todd Young. None of this would have come to fruition had I not attended Ancilla. After graduating from Ancilla, I was nervous to move on to a bigger school. I did not want to become a student ID number at a larger institution, and I feared I would get lost in the crowd. However, there's yet another special thing about Ancilla worth noting. The support does not stop after you graduate. I cannot tell you how many times I have reached out to friends here at Ancilla after graduating and asked for help in a time of need. Every single time, somebody comes through. One of the biggest mistakes you can make after graduating from Ancilla is not keeping in contact. There are people here that will work tirelessly to help you because they genuinely care. While I could go on and on about amazing experiences here at Ancilla, like playing on the men's golf team, serving in student government, and bonfires by the lake, and actually at this point I'd like to point out that Dr. Zirkel stole my joke. This is where I was going to talk about nobody complained about a speech being too short. So I'm going to start wrapping up. I do want to leave you with some parting thoughts though. You've had an experience that most college students never will. You have a rock solid foundation under you to keep you steady moving forward and a whole group of people that want to see you succeed. Be confident in that. I would encourage you to give back to Ancilla in any way that you can, whether it's time, money, talent, or simply encouraging other potential students to apply. The Ancilla experience is one that more people should have, and your support will bring that to other students. Now, go forward boldly and tackle whatever new challenges you are facing. Use your education to do some good in this world and never forget where you came from. Know that everyone at this school stands firmly behind you in support. As the Apostle Paul wrote in Romans chapter 15 verse 13, may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him, so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. You are all in my prayers as you enter this new and exciting phase of your life. Thank you very much. I can imagine in the future that we'll be approaching several of you to come back and, and say something on behalf of the college, such as Mr. Danielson did or as Josh Felty did. Um, and Scylla, though a two-year school, indeed has an impact that most of you at this point cannot yet begin to realize. You'll realize that when you get out and you begin doing things, and you understand how, how important it is. And when you start talking to fellow students that have graduated from uh, larger institutions, uh, you will notice almost immediately the difference. Um, I've told some people, my wife and I both graduated from Penn State where we were numbers. 50,000 students living on campus, another 50,000 that could go there. When we had our children, we said they could go any place they wanted, except that it had to be a small college to start with. If they wanted to get a master's or a doctorate, fine, go to a large school. But to get started in a small situation, just like Ancilla. And for the same reasons, you get that personal attention. You have people that truly care, and the caring doesn't end when you walk through the gate today. Graduates, you're ready. You are the best educated, most well-informed, and resourceful generation that America has yet to produce. Sometimes we wonder that as you're going through. I congratulate you on this, your moment of special recognition. You are very special and we are extremely proud of each of you. I ask you combine your God-given talents with what you have learned. 
go forward with a positive attitude, with enthusiasm, with confidence, and with a firm belief that you can have a significant impact on whatever you choose to do, that you can and will help make this a better world. Leave you with the following prayer for your life. May the Lord go before you to guide you, above you to bless you, beneath you to uphold you, beside you to teach you, and behind you to forgive you. I sincerely hope that each of you will thoroughly enjoy a very productive life and will always have time in your life and a spot in your heart for your alma mater, Ancilla College. I would ask you to join us after. The whole crowd is welcome at the end today uh, to go to Cana Hall for a reception for everyone that's here. Downstairs, you can't, you get out and follow the crowd, you'll find it, uh, or you'll smell the food. At this time, I'd, last, I'd ask Hagen Hyatt to come up and give the benediction. My dear fellow students, may the Lord light your future with prosperity and contentment so that you may so that you may be a blessing to all those around you. And may the Lord give you peace in the middle of your storms, so that you may be the bearer of that same peace to those around you. May the Lord give you an abundance of love, so that you may shine like a city on a hill. And may the Lord give you the joy of continual learning, so that in due time, you may teach others the wisdom that has been imparted to you here. May God grant you the courage to live out your dreams. And may that courage inspire others to live out their dreams as well. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for the faculty and staff that you have placed at Ancilla College. We pray blessings upon the people who have given much so that we may fulfill our dreams and ambitions. Give them the wisdom and knowledge to continue making Ancilla the college you designed it to be. Lord, I pray that my fellow graduates and I stay true to our dreams. I pray that we use our gifts and talents for the benefit of all. Give us divine guidance to make decisions in accordance with your will. Lord, help us all to walk into the future that you have planned for us with unwavering faith, courageous hope, and relentless love. In Christ's name we pray, amen. amen. I just mentioned that the platform party will leave first, followed by the students, so the rest of the, the audience remain until after the students come and then follow them out. Thank you. <laughs>